In the United States, child poverty has reached record levels, with over 16 million children now affected. To us, it's just how we live. You don't get to make choices in how you live. One in 12 Americans are now jobless, and many children are growing up with little hope of long-term employment. The president says he's trying to make jobs, but I don't think there's a job out there for me yet. Food banks and homeless shelters are facing unprecedented demand, as even middle-income families sometimes lose their homes with just a few days' notice. If the TV can fit in your school bag, you can take it. <laughs> if it didn't fit, you couldn't take it. We asked three children what life in modern America really looks like, through their eyes. Stockton, Iowa. I am 10 years old and I live with my mother and my brother Tyler and he is 12 years old. America. I don't think we're a rich family but like I think we're kind of a poor family. Oh yay! That one was good! That one was good! <laughs> sorry, sis. Stop pulling. I'm sorry. How do you think you have customers? <laughs> customers. <laughs> you can't pull it, Mom, when I'm doing this. Kaylee's mum, Barbara, used to work in a factory, but lost that job nine months ago. After struggling to find another, she's decided to retrain as a hairdresser. I don't want you to freaking cut me. I'm not going to cut you. You better not. I've been in school long enough, I won't cut you. Or you're dead. I mean it. Kaylee's never met her father, and though her grandma lives nearby and helps out when she can, the family are struggling to get by on just $320 a week unemployment benefit, plus food stamps. I'm hungry. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that as soon as you... You're going to have to wait now, sis. I'm just starving. We don't get the three meals a day, like breakfast, lunch, and then dinner. When I feel just, like, hungry, I'll just, like, I'll feel like... Like I'm so like sad and all droopy and then I'll be I'll feel like weak and then some in the mornings I'll be like so starving but then I'll like be like I need some food but then like I'll get like but then I don't think of food and then I'll just think of something else and then I'll I'll not be hungry anymore. There's good days and bad days. Sometimes when we have cereal we don't have milk, we have to eat it dry. Sometimes we don't have cereal and we have milk. It's often like switch and swap. Sometimes like when I switch the channel and there's a cooking show on, I get a little more hungry and I wanna vanish into the screen and start eating the food. Iowa is one of the bread baskets of the world, but this is no land of plenty for Kaylee. Needing every cent, she and her friend often walk along the railway track, despite the danger, to look for old cans. My best friend is Jordan and we grew up together. We like to go canning to make money. A lot of people throw their cans away. Yeah. You know the garbage is recyclable. Cans! We canning, I just walk around, look for cans and I walk. I walk like around the whole town. The non-squished ones are five cents. And the squished are two. So. Yeah. 
Over 60,000 bankruptcies were declared in Iowa last year alone. Over Katie's lifetime, the economy in her town has seen a sharp decline. In 2004 is when this shut down. And now look at it, it's crappy. It used to be so special. Didn't that used to be a movie theater? What? That. No. What did it used to be? It was the old bank. Huh. I bet there's old money in there. I'm not going in there. The no. floor fell in. <laughs> that would be awesome if there was like, like thousands and thousands of dollars. We can't afford to pay our bills, like our house bills and stuff. I'm afraid like we'll get homeless. Me and my brother will starve. You never know what will happen in your life. So, yeah. The homelessness Kaylee fears is already a reality for over one and a half million children across the U.S. My name is Jasmine, and I am nine years old, and I live with my brothers Joshua, Jalen, and Johnny. My name is Johnny Davis. I am um, 13 years old, finna be 14 in three months. Johnny and Jasmine have been living in a Salvation Army shelter for homeless families in Davenport, Iowa for the last three months. My dad had got a, a business and he was making about a good $5,000 a month. We had good and fancy things then. We had a, like a three bedroom house, a living room, had a 32 inch flat screen TV in there. My mom's and dad room had a a 42-inch flat screen TV in their room, and that's what TV you watch the Super Bowl on. When the recession hit, the family's home improvement business folded, and they soon struggled to pay the rent. They clung onto their house for as long as possible, but that meant that when the time finally came, the kids had just a few days to pack up everything and leave. Anything that can fit in a bag or a suitcase, you can take it. Whatever, dude, like this TV, the yellow one in the living room, that only made it because it could fit in my bag. If it couldn't fit in my bag, that would have been left behind too. My second motorcycle! Oh! oh. He did it. All right. I go. won't say um, I hide the fact that I'm homeless, but it's not something, once again, that you just want to come out and broadcast and say, well, hey, you know, I'm homeless. That's the same as somebody with, uh, let's say, HIV or AIDS. They don't come out and tell you, hey, you know, I'm sick you know, because you will be treated differently. And it's the same as somebody that's homeless. Hey, that's enough. That's enough. Didn't I say stop? <laughs> Didn't I? All right. It's time for shower and bed. I'm the dearest because I'm poor and I don't, I live in, because I live in a shelter. You don't want a lot of people to find out that you live here. People will make fun of it, and, and it'll, it, it, can, it can really hunt you after a while. It, it starts, you start to have no friends. People tease you about it and stuff like that. It makes me feel like I just wish I never lived here. We ask you, Father, today for good homes and good futures for everybody staying here. Good income so that they can have security in their home. It's a kid at the school who looks dressed worse than me, but he has his own house, though. He got a house to call home. He don't have to go sit down with thousands of people to eat dinner. He can run to his refrigerator and open it up, and I can't do that. I have to wait to a certain time and I have to eat, because if I don't eat, I will starve all night until the next morning. 
make sure you stay in line so you can get your plate, okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Stand right here. And as soon as she goes, Johnny, you go after Jasmine. I gotta run to the car and get my lunch. That's one of the things I feel like I desperately miss is just being able to cook for my own family, to buy food and put it inside and put our groceries up and just the stuff that you used to be like, oh, grocery shopping. And I took it for granted. And now I just, I miss it. I miss it. I'm just laying out right there. Chill, Jazz. It's to open up the boxes. Open it with your hands? No, it's tape. That tape hard. Jazz, no. When you live in a shelter, you have to obey by the rules and do your chore. And if you don't, you get, um, get a write up. Some of the chores are um, sweeping, mopping, doing dishes, putting away hot and cold food, and doing the trash. And if you don't, you get um, get a write up. You get a write up for staying out too long at nighttime. You get a write up for having problems with the front front ladies at the front desk. There's, and if you have more than think eight or something, you get put out. What type of animal is the North America Roadrunner? D, a bird. Correct. You should know that off the cartoon. Yeah. With over 200 families waiting for a place in this shelter alone, Jasmine's family know that if they're kicked out, there's nowhere else to go. Delivery is here. Don't smell. Oh, it's more delivery? Homelessness threatens Kaylee too. The family's electricity is going to be cut off unless their grand can pay the bill. So money is tighter than ever. This is embarrassing, Mom. We go to Salvation Army and it's 60 cent shirts. $2. Wow. That's so much. Here. Kaylee, it's blue tag, half 45 cents. We can't get nothing at the mall. Like, I've been when I was about, like, seven, when my mom, like, had money, like, lots of money. 25 cents. to wait till Grandma comes home anyway. Give me something to eat. Okay. What do you have in the house at the moment? Nothing. We have to wait till Grandma comes home. She doesn't get it. My mom is having a hard time on economy. She has very little in her bank. And like, she can't pay all of her bills at the same time. The bills here at the house is just too much for me to handle. I've never seen it this bad. To get jobs, it's very hard. It's very, very hard. My mom has got her a master's in accounting and has been looking for another job for a year, and she still hasn't found anything. And she has a lot of education. Okay, <laughs> More than 49 million Americans are now living below the poverty line, many as a result of unemployment. Things haven't been this bad since the Great Depression. My income is 480 or 1480. And the total of my bills is thirteen twenty six, and that does not leave me money for food or gas. A lot of times I have to 
give my money up to buy groceries and buy gas for the car and lawnmower. For mowing other people's lawns and I got $10 and I put in six of it for the gas and gave the rest to my mom for some food and it's kind of what I do with my money. I don't think I'm going to do mowing for a living. I watched this one show where it said they're raising the gas prices and my mom can't even afford gas. We have to be careful how we use our gas, how we use everything, mostly, because these days everything is expensive. There's now a real danger that this month's rent won't be found and the family will have to leave their home. I don't want to move. I like living here because my friends are nice to me. Like, I want to stay put here. Rent and bills means it costs over $1,000 a month to stay in the family home. But a single room in a motel could cost less than $700 a month all in. Right now, there doesn't seem to be a way out. So my only options are to give up my house and move into the motel room and move my stuff into storage till, and keep going to school. And I seen a doctor last week for depression and she put me on some antidepressants and uh, Xanax for my panic attacks. I mean, I don't even know if I can find a job when I get out of school or if it'll ever get any better. We'll have to find daycare for Kaylee. I mean, she's 10, but still. Her and Tyler, their brother and sister, they fight. <laughs> I'll come home and the one will be hanging from a ceiling fan and the other one will be God knows where. <laughs> I'm scared. The house isn't the only thing under threat. One of the family's dogs may also have to go. We won't get to keep our dog, Nala. And it's extra money and we're gonna get rid of her. Nala, like I wanna spend as much time as with her, but then again, I wanna spend time with my friends. I'm mostly happy. It's like I'm, I'm in a different world. I'm always dancing nonstop. Um, I just love dancing. I'm just truly in love with dancing. It's like my destiny to become um, like a famous dancer or a famous cheerleader. I feel like it's my destiny. <laughs> The search for a new life with a job and a home brings 400,000 people a year to San Francisco's Bay Area. But rents here are the highest in America and work can be hard to find. 11-year-old Sarah, her sister and her mum moved here in 2009. But when the economy collapsed, her mum lost her job and the family now have to survive on just $600 a month unemployment. They're living in a one-room, rent-subsidized apartment. It's kind of hard because you don't have your own room. You just have your little area. And then 
like this is my mom's area, over there's my my area, and over there is my sister's area. This room's incredibly slow. It's very small. I do not like small spaces. At all. It's close to me. Don't be mean to my computer. I'm not being mean to your computer. It just runs really freaking small. My mom's got a fold out bed. My sister's got a blow up <laughs> bed that she's too lazy to blow up. And I've got floor pillows. They're actually quite comfortable. It's messy, but look at how much stuff we have. And then look at how small of a room this is. You wouldn't be able to keep it very contained either if you've got three people living in a really small room with one small bathroom and one small kitchen. It's not that easy. And plus we've got a lot of stuff and a lot of books. So it's really, really hard. What a surprise! <laughs> 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 Go to her, ha 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 ha. The windows fog up and like it gets all drippy and stuff. The mildew, it um, it it's annoying. Uh, like you'll wash the walls and you think it you dry it all. A couple days later, there's more mildew on the on it on it. So it's like oh my god, because this wall these walls are bumpy. So it's hard to clean it all. Uh, <laughs> ha! Uh, not all you need right now. Go ahead. I don't think it's a good way to be growing up. I guess it was just the family I was put into. It was all for some reason. Maybe it was because we're strong. I don't know. Sarah used to live in a homeless shelter. So even one small room is a step up. But what the family really wants is to get long-term subsidised housing before the help they get with the rent here runs out. Well, we're trying to get into this bigger place called Thomas Paine. And they said any time between the be early February and late February, and it's April. <laughs> and we haven't gotten in yet. <laughs> I know one thing. If we don't get Thomas Paine, we go back to a place called The Shelter. I don't want to go back. <laughs> That's how I feel. I do not want to go back. I've already been there once. Once is enough for me. <laughs> I think we all don't want to go back. If we go back there, we'd be sharing a big room with a dozen or so more people. That's the shelter right there. There are four floors. We lived on the second floor. I don't want to go back because I can cook for myself here and I can go to the bathroom on my own here. I don't have, my, have to have my mom and my sister take me to the bathroom in the middle of the night. But this apartment is only temporary and they will have to move soon. I think it's kind of scary that really we don't have much of a choice if we lose this place. This is not the great American dream. In Iowa, the moment Kaylee has been dreading has arrived. No, she was like my favorite dog. And now we have to take her to the pound. We have to get rid of Nala, but not Tater. Nala is so adorable. Like if you if you had her, she would sleep on your bed and she would sleep on you. She's like your little do guard dog. We're getting rid of my perfect little lovey dog. Yes, now I hear you're stressing out. The 
she have any favorite toys or games? Lo she needs lots and lots of bones. Okay. Yeah, she She'll chews chew that bones. one in like, like an hour. Okay. She hates bass. Uh, oh yeah. Doesn't like bass. No. This is my animal lover. Yeah. <laughs> she'll have to go into our isolation room since she hasn't um, gotten any vaccinations yet. So yeah. she'll be in an isolated area right now. Mm. All right, sweetie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just the leash. Okay. And the collar. Why the collar? With Nala gone, the time has come to leave the house and move into a motel room. This will be the family's home from now on, unless mum can get them all a place in a homeless shelter. We thought we were getting a double bed. And there's no mini fridge. That was with the double bed. No. Dang it. And there's no microwave. OK, we have to ask him about that. God. I thought we were getting a double bed. Well, we're going to have yeah. to ask him about the mini fridge. This is small. It's going to be small. Plain and simple, it's going to be small. But this is as big as my room. Yeah? One of the many downsides of life in a shelter is that sickness spreads between families all too easily. Everybody's been having the runs, stomach aches, whole nine yards. She just, we was going out to take her to school this morning and she just threw up all in all way. Although Jasmine's dad has now managed to get a job at minimum wage, his employer does not cover the family for medical insurance. Almost one in seven Americans are now without health insurance more than ever before. Without cover, the family has to find clinics and pharmacies that will treat people on basic state Medicaid. A lot of places don't take Iowa Medicaid because they know it's from public aid, it's public assistance, low income, no income. So a lot of places will not take you. And then a lot of them say they don't take new patients. So then what do you do? Go to the emergency room. Then you end up with another bill. The latest problem is that Johnny has caught a highly contagious skin infection, so the family's rooms have to be completely disinfected. And it got it was getting even worse, so he said we were going to go to the hospital. And that's when Josh got sick, so we really had to go to the hospital. So now he has to be quarantined off from the rest of the family. So now you got to sleep on the fire escape. <laughs> no, nah, but you just make sure, don't, just don't touch anybody. I'm watching you. When he was first infected, there was no choice but to go to the emergency room of the local hospital. Don't touch it. The discharge lady came in asking questions about the Medicaid or whatever, and she was like, oh, well, I guess I'll have to look it up. But if, if, but if I can't find it, we'll have to bill you. Yeah, so there's another bill coming. It's life, though. What can you do? Roll with the punches, right? Because he's stuck. He's stuck. He just got stuck. It's not big at all. So small. Mice only coming in here. Because they're coming from under there or under there. All the pieces, pieces and all of that stuff you be having all over. It's not me. Exactly. It's Why he always coming from in this corner? They always come Because from Jim got all that crap on these Every veins. single time I Stop saw them. saying crap. Mom. Both of them I saw one from in this corner. This building is kind of old. 
Mike's been here for a long, a long time before we've been here. Of course, they're gonna get in here. Um, we just, we like I just said, any mouse that comes in here, we're taking them out. Like they're not gonna, they're not gonna stay for long. They ain't gonna know not to come in this room. <laughs> Somebody tell me what? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Look at this, look at this, look at this, look at that. Tell me no, that why Jaylen. the mice ain't coming in. Jaylen, no, Jaylen. He got them, um, the, um, Jesus. You see this? That's why the mice keep coming in here. Don't bring nothing else in here, you hear me? When you ah, in trouble, that's something gonna be on you. Stop letting go. As a mother, you always got different thoughts going through your head and mind and wishing that you could change things and wishing things was different. But what are you to do? You can't keep beating yourself up about it, but at the same time, it's just hard. Having a family is hard. Maintaining a family is hard. Keeping us indoors is hard. That's what I got on my grades. What? Oh, oh. That's good. <laughs> on for the Willis team. The looks of it, that saved you from 70 lashes, didn't it? <laughs> so did you do Science. good? I got two A's, two B's, and two C's. Oh, wow. That's what's up, Johnny I have Brown. to get you a skateboard. Grades is my only way out of here. If my grades not good, I know I can't go to school. Universities like my dream is to go. I know if my grades are not good, I can't play football like I want to. If I don't succeed doing what I have to do in school and making good grades, I will fail. I'm gonna live this life, life of shelters, going through hard times, can't feed my kids, um, trying to figure out where I'm gonna lay at my head every night. Homeless kids are eight times more likely than other children to be put back a year at school. Kaylee and her family have been living in the motel for four weeks. It's the summer holidays at the moment, but if their mum can't find a permanent home soon, Kaylee and Tyler will have to face the next term in school as homeless children. Living in a motel is like, like it's cool, but then not so cool. I'm always cleaning. Tyler barely ever helps. He cleaned once, twice, three times. I've cleaned kind of a lot. Mine, then you come hold this. No, let it go. It's not fitting. Look. Well, then freaking stop using your foot and be a man. It's not fitting. You don't smack me. Yes, it is. No. Be right back. Cold stuff that needs to be freezed is in the sink. We don't have a fridge, just the sink is our fridge. We have to get ice mostly every day because it melts during night. It's all crunched up and there's not much space. See? Oh. He takes up the whole way to go to the bathroom. <laughs> we had much more space in the house. There's no friends, no one to play with. I miss. Jordan. I pass the time by watching TV or talking to Alex, helping him do the laundry and then putting stickers on the cards. What are you doing today? Oh, good. Oh, it's hot here. There is a new people came in room number 124, like you, and they have kids about your age. 
Are you sure? Yeah, you checked them out. <laughs> 126? 124. This motel is one of the few in the area that allows homeless families to stay long term. Most insist they book in one night at a time, so they can be forced to leave at a day's notice. How many families live here? Here it depends. Sometimes people come for weekly stays, sometimes for you guys like, <laughs> right? Yeah, I've met so in more. summer there is more, in winter there is more people for the extended stays who are homeless and in the winter the sh the shelters them are all you know filled up so people can't sleep outside. When I struggle for money, there's nothing to eat. All there is is cans of vegetables. So I've been eating vegetables. There's really not enough food. Kaylee has also joined the 37 million Americans who now depend on food banks. One in five children across America now receive food aid. We get 15 items, right? Three Jiffy mixes. No. Applesauce, you can have applesauce with cinnamon. Yeah, we need veggies in here. Oh, here, SpaghettiOs. The meatballs. The raviolis. We need more canned goods. The potatoes for the vegetable soup. Thank you. Oh, Mom, did we get ground beef? You keep saying that, and we don't have a fridge to put it in right now. That's why I didn't get it. If I could change anything, it would be being poor. And I really don't want to be poor, because then you can't get, because then how can you pay rent? How can you get food? How can you get a roof over your head? if you're gonna be poor. We're still in the, the same itty bitty apartment we were in before, and we haven't gotten Thomas Paine. They said, one month. Thomas Paine is long-term subsidized housing the family could stay in for good. But they're running out of time for a place to come up. So they're back at the shelter to sign up on the waiting list here as well. No kid should ever have to go through two homeless shelters just to get into a sustainable apartment or house. This form that I'm going to have you sign is just the family shelter intake policy. And the intake policy says you need to limit your belongings to one bag per person. Mm -hmm. I know it might be hard. Do you have a lot of Wait, stuff? Can it um can it be like a bag of clothes and stuff, and then a computer? Because a computer Probably. doesn't really count as a bag. It's a it's an electronic. Is that gonna be a problem? <laughs> you seem nervous. Sad. <laughs> Sad. Yeah. Well, you can look into putting some of your stuff in storage while mm -hmm. you're in the shelter, and then when you get out, you can have your stuff back. As they probably told you on the phone, it is unfortunately about a six-month wait to get into shelter right now, which is really long. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the longest waits that we've ever had, and unfortunately we don't have more shelter space to accommodate at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but during that time on the waiting list, the most important thing is to be calling and checking in once a week in order to stay on the list. Right. So that's definitely the most important thing. So how is everything else going at the apartment right now? Um, things are going okay. I'm just looking for food banks right now because food's really expensive right now. We have enough rice to feed us tonight and tomorrow. That's it. Yeah. Okay, well we can definitely get you a bag of food before you leave here. Uh -huh. So we have a choice of canned food right now. We have um, beans and franks, ramen, tuna, and spam. So you can take your pet. Spam. You said the magic word. She loves spam. Okay. <laughs> Spam, yeah. I'll get you some Spam then. <laughs> okay, great, thank right. you. Spam, 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 Spam. Yes, I know, you love Spam. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so here is a bag of food. Oh, there's some canned food, some macaroni and cheese. Mac and cheese! Thank and you so cereal. much. And then there's two bus tokens, and those are good for um, one fare and transfer each on the bus. Great, oh, thank wow. you so much. Right, no problem. Okay.
The people who cut budgets are the ones that are making it hard for my mom to get by in today's world. Sarah lives in a part of San Francisco known as the Tenderloin. It's a neighborhood synonymous with drugs, violence, and homelessness. The reason I don't go out on the street very much is because, well, I live in the Tenderloin and that pretty much talks for itself. There are people on drugs out there and um, I don't think an 11 year old or anyone older or younger should be around this stuff. Especially the drug dealers because it makes your brain squish. It basically makes your brain go like pudding. <laughs> what I do on the weekend, look out the window, watching the people on the streets and um, and I call it spaying on the people down on the street. Because <laughs> I have these little binoculars and I look, I look out the window and it's funny because one person actually looked up and saw me looking out and like, I'm not doing nothing. <laughs> My sister has taught me if a man throws the first punch and misses, you throw the second punch and not miss. And I know where to hit a man where it hurts. I do. From my mom and my sister. stuff to the other house? Hey. Okay, I know, I said yes. With help from a charity, Kaylee's family has been able to find a house to rent, and today they are leaving the motel. But moving house is one of the most stressful things a family can do, even more so when it's the second time in just a couple of months. I'm looking forward to moving away from here because I really do not want to live here because I don't have space. Kaylee! Kaylee! Can you just wait? I'll do it. Don't want to hear you whining and pick up all the stuff by that sink over there. Oh my Take god, I gotta pack my toy! And now we left my toys at the freaking other house. Work on the yelling. I don't care if she hears this, but still, she needs to work on her yelling. So I do not want to get yelled at when we're moving. She does this all the time. The only stressful moment is now when we're moving, when she says she's going to do it happily. What part of you shut up do you not get? Ooh. I want to scream. I'm going to explode. The family can barely afford the rent for the new house. In fact, they are depending on their grand to pay the first month and hoping the charity will help them after that. There's no money left over for furniture. Hey, Tim, let's go look at our new house. Come on. This is our living room. This is the kitchen. Hey, come on, let's go upstairs. 
there's mom's room. Oh, how can you do this up on these stairs? Come on, Taylor. <laughs> and here's my room. What are you doing? Now I'm gonna have to put a rug over there. Come on, Taylor. At my new home, I kinda like it, then I kinda don't. I mostly sleep on the floor. It would be more comfortable with the bed. <laughs> Winter. There's really nothing to do. Just fold my clothes, mess them all up, fold them, mess them all up, fold them, or clean. But there's not much to clean but the kitchen, so. Some kids have large houses, they, are, they can have whatever they want. But I think my mom, she kind of make a wrong turn or something. So that's what all started this. The good news for Johnny's family is that they have finally moved to a self-contained apartment in the Salvation Army shelter. They can now lock their own front door. But this also means they no longer qualify for free meals in the shelter canteen. new apartment, the transition to housing. My mom says it's harder because she has to spend a lot of money to feed us and to spend a lot of money to get the house together and like buy stuff. You get too big. You always want something extra. I don't want nothing extra. Yes, you do. You want a phone. You I got a shoes. Phone. I'm not wearing no earth walkers outside. No, sir. <laughs> Jordans and Nike. Johnny, Nikes is, and Jordans are expensive. I know. Just for a name, that makes no sense. Well, you need a job. <laughs> Nike's not expensive. Look, I've no. been buying Josh shoes after shoes after shoes. I can't afford it. Now what? Walmart? He gotta take Walmart. What else can I do? At least his feet not dragging the ground. It was some Jordan flip flops in there for 30 bucks. Now that's a great deal. You cannot find no Jordan flip flops, the brand new kind, for no 30 bucks. They probably not real. Is but that guess a great what? deal when I can go to Walmart and buy my the, the shoes I'm wearing I got from Walmart for $5. I'm to my name brand stuff. They That's a good deal, mom. My sandals are if nice, you closely, right? If you listen to $5. it, it's a good you want deal. some of those, right? Mom. See, that's why I like y'all when y'all small. They like they accept stuff. You get too big. Your feet growing. You in grown people's shoes now. Oh, please stop growing. <laughs> we have more money in the shelter part than we had here because now everything is all on our own now. Down there, we took everything for granted. You, um, you get free food every day. Um, you got a free place to live. <laughs> Oh, so. here's a, one of Tom's old business cards. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember T and C. Yeah. T and C, Tom and Classy. Yeah. <laughs> it was me and him all the time. Until the recession, the family had their own business. The plan now is for Tom to do odd jobs in his spare time to raise some extra cash. I know we lost a lot with the business, and me and Tom every day putting our heads together, trying to think about what else can we do to get ourselves out of this. See what we can come up with to make some extra money. So we wouldn't be in a hole all the time or just barely trying to find food. I mean, I would think at least everybody in America can have some food and housing. The poorest man, a place to sleep and food. And it's not that way. It's a little rough, a lot rough. <laughs> All I want is to play football, but football is expensive. Now I can name a few of the things, items I need and want for my sports, but I just gotta wait on to do it till the next time my mama can afford it. Ooh, one, I'm 14. My life is almost over until I'm a grown man. And if I don't have the opportunity to show somebody to play football, football won't exist in four years. 
nothing now. If I don't get to play on the team this year, that dream is going to slowly start fading away. That's what happened to some of the dreams of kids. They pertain to something and they can't afford it or when I can't do it. Today, the San Francisco Mime Troupe is performing political satire. My mother, she's desperately poor. Poor in America? Yes, <laughs> and now... The good news is, um, we got Thomas Paine. And, um, they're just doing maintenance, you know. Next week, we're going to sign the lease. My house. I counted how many stairs there are. There's 50. When I saw this house for the first time, I was speechless. I, I couldn't talk. It's our large bathroom. Mine and my sister's. I love it. <laughs> this is my room. I like it because it's got my bells on the door. This house is ours. No roommates, no, um, probably no eviction notices. I won't forget this experience because it's it's a life changer, you know? <laughs> no kid should have to go through this. Um, yet everyday kids do. And it's just crazy. They're going to a tea party. Ooh, tea. It's not a fun experience. It's annoying that people say, oh, it doesn't matter. It's just a little problem. It's over now. Get over it. And no, it's not over. It changes you. I may be still the same old obnoxious Sarah, but deep down, I'm a whole new person. Well, I'm a whole different person. We're back in this motel again because we got kicked out of the duplex. The rent, and so then we went to Motel 6, and then we went to this Twin Bridges Hotel, and then we went to here. Oh God, we went to so many places. Even talking about this makes me dizzy. Come on, come on. It's overfilled, Kaylee. Look. It's not going in. Oh well, move. I can make it work. Yes, it will. Mum's latest plan is to get a trailer so the family can have a more stable home. But in the meantime, Kaylee's education is suffering. Why can't I go to school? I would get you in school, but we gotta wait till we get the trailer, which is only like a few days away. So there's no sense in putting you in school over here if you're going to be switching to Iowa over there. Okay. We've been moving around a lot between Iowa and Moline that my mom can't sign us up for school. I wouldn't want to go to school and then going to a different school like one or two weeks later. If you go to school and then like one or two weeks, you're going to have to move, but then you have to move from all your new friends, all your teachers, when you have such a good time. And so my mom says that we're going to go, we're going to get in school when we move into the trailer that we are getting. So the trailer? It is very livable. It has floors. We're going to be redoing Am I going to have to crawl in with the snakes to get no. the pipes unfrozen? No. 
It's all that. The best thing to do is put hay bales. I know. Around it. We're gonna get some of those and do that. Oh, but we're gonna be moving the trailer probably in a couple of summers. But that'll be two years away, so because we have to have a two-year lease. What? If we stay there two years. I really want to be in school because if you don't get a good education, then you you don't get much money. You don't get a good job. You 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 end up sleeping at your mom's. You ends up you end up being behind a lot of rent and then you get kicked out. You end up being homeless and then with no food. Attack. If I keep missing school, then I see my future poor on the streets, in a box, not even, and asking for money everywhere, everybody, and then stealing stuff from stores, and yeah, I don't want to steal stuff. <laughs> I don't want to do any of that stuff. I want to get education. Good job. Poverty affects every aspect of a child's life. Their education, health and future prospects all suffer. Since 2007, the number of homeless children across the US has increased by almost half a million. Unless the world's wealthiest nation can build more effective safety nets for its most vulnerable young citizens, millions more could follow. People who come in in a homeless shelter, it can just be somebody who was living good at one time and had it all to a bill that we didn't get paid, off a utility bill, off a, a payment, a foreclosure, anything. Anything can easily tear them straight down to the floor and ain't the ground zero. Life is a lot of a maze. <laughs> there is always dead ends. And you gotta turn around, pick yourself up, and turn around and go the other way. But in the end, you always get out of a maze. The way I live, it's a lesson. I believe that I'm going to get a perfect job that I like and that I want to do. People can't stop you from believing in your own dreams.